IRS went insane. It was fucking horrible! Havasti land lovers, and uh, welcome to another opening night. This hat is, um... <laughs> Bug. Uh, it's a really nice solid hat. I picked it up during Halloween, and also this uh, really nice uh, French Napoleon uh, cavalry saber, which is often confused for a pirate sword, but it is pretty cool. I just picked this up. It's actually really nice. But um, yeah, we're here to talk about an opening night movie. I haven't done these in a couple months. I am so sorry, guys, that I haven't been able to put these out. Um, it's just work has been abysmal just i'm lucky to get out one video a month i'm lucky to get any videos out at all uh fatigue has been a problem this year and so has getting this finale done which we are heavily deep into uh things are going at a slower pace but we're getting it done but regardless um i figured i'd bring these back in in a interesting way in some regard uh i don't know how many i'm gonna be able to pop these up but i'm gonna do my best i keep saying that i keep promising so don't take my word for it but uh, I have been recently challenged, uh, by one JT is Reborn, uh, that he would talk about a movie I requested, and then I would talk about a movie he requested. And for those who don't know, uh, JT is Reborn and I, uh, covered last year for its 30th anniversary, Steven Spielberg's Hook. And since we're both fans of the swashbuckler genre, uh, I asked him to watch, because he'd never seen it, and review... Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, with Kevin Costner and Alan Rickman. Great music, great production qualities, uh, fun villain. Uh, it's a good movie from that time period of the 90s, Swashbucklers. Um, but in exchange, I had to cover something. And I decided to cover the infamous box office flop that totally sank the notion of the pirate genre until Pirates of the Caribbean came out in 2003. Oddly enough, shit, that turns 20 years old uh, next year. I'm talking about Cutthroat Island. <laughs> I know, okay, so uh, first of all, I watched this on Laserdisc. I, I had this one for a while. I've never played this Laserdisc, so I figured this would be the good occasion to pull it out and try it out. And, and you know, it works. It's great. But there's the Laserdisc. Um, what a nice... The laser dust, like the poster's great. Now, full disclosure, um, as you might know from the movies I've covered and ho the Hook review, uh, me and JT are huge fans of the swashbuckler, the pirates, the the adventures, the sword fights, the damsels in distress. Like we love those kind of movies. They don't make them much anymore, and you know times are changing. But on top of that, they're a big hassle to put together. This is no exception. Not only did this movie flop, it also destroyed an entire film production company. That was Calico, who uh, mostly is famous for doing Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And they made a shit ton of money on that, and they started to become a big production, and this movie killed it. <laughs> this movie killed it, and then they had to create C2 Pictures to do Terminator 3 with Warner Brothers. So, um, in regards to this movie, I have heard, as the pirates would say in the prison of the Caribbean, I've heard stories uh -huh. Several people have sunk from this film. Uh, it was over budget. It was like $100 million. It made nothing at all. I don't even think home video saved it. They had video game prepared for it. I heard that sucked. But um, <laughs> uh, I've never sat through this one. This is one of those pirate movies that I've never seen at all, which I, I'm, there are a couple I've never, I've only discovered recently that I love. Um, and I will admit, I've seen the poster more than I have the film. And it always felt like a fake poster. This is like, to be fair, this is a beautiful poster. I think this is Drew Struzan who, who uh, painted this. But um, in regards to the film, I sat down and watched it. And um, I, I mean, again, I've heard, the reason I'm kind of held off is that it just felt kind of boring. It felt kind of like slow paced and everything. And I stand corrected on that. The first half of this movie is really boring. And it's really... I don't give a fuck what's going on. Half of it is horses. On, on Pirates on the horses. Not pirates on the ship on the open seas as the uh, poster suggests. A lot of it's horses and I wonder if it does have to do with the production. But basically plot wise uh, Gina Davis and Matthew mm, whatever um, not Matthew McConaughey um, basically find this treasure and then they go off to find it and there's portrayals with the redcoats and pirates and one of the pirates being played by uh, Frank Angela, who I really like him as an actor. So, um, 
that's really the plot. It's just a treasure pirate treasure movie with some sword fights and sailing ships and cannons firing and betrayals left and right and quirky humor. The stuff you come to expect. And I love those kind of pirate movies. Like, they're fun films to watch. Um, however, I will admit... <laughs> The, the shortest version I have for this, my thoughts on this movie is to quote Jeremy Johns, you're not going to remember it in T-minus one day, and that's its biggest crime. I think that's why it's flopped. It's forgettable. It's so forgettable as a movie. I vaguely remember anything of it outside of the treasure cave, the island, the cinematography, and the final battle. But that's it. It's just... It's just bland. And what's funny is, is that I've seen the production behind the first Pirates of the Caribbean. And this movie is one of the reasons why Michael Eisner just didn't want to do it, because this movie tanked so hard in... What year did this come out? 1996! Ironically, the year that there was another pirate movie that came out that did way better than this. Muppet Treasure Island. <laughs> and I love the hell out of that one. That's my favorite adaptation of the Stevenson novel. But, um... Ironically, that made more money than this. And that's kind of a crime. That's kind of sad. Um, but for some reason... I, I've seen the production behind the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and the plot of it is very similar to this. In fact, there's a lot of similarities between this film and the first Pirates of the Caribbean in terms of just the pace, the tone, the way the adventure is handled, the uh, going to Tortuga, going to the Pirate's Cave, big battle at the end. It is very similar to the first Pirates movie. And it feels like I've read the, like, sort of the early scripts of what they were doing for, like, Jack Sparrow being more of the classic Earl Flynn rather than a rock star and so on, and it you could tell that this was almost like the first draft for the first Pirates movie, and I'm kind of glad they didn't do that, because that movie would have been boring. But this movie is just very forgettable. There's nothing really special about it. It's just another typical pirate adventure movie. I actually kind of relate it similar to Roman Polanski's Pirates, which I have seen when I did my research for Hulk, because the costume designer... Uh, on that movie, I actually did the design costume designs for Hook, and it makes me think that a lot of the costumes from that film, the Polanski film, uh, Steven just used on Hook because we could save money. But it, it feels like that in the sense of it feels like a director's passion project, and nobody wanted to do it. From what I've heard, so many actors turned this movie down. I think Tom Cruise was going to be the lead, but he turned it down. It, this movie killed Gina Davis's career, and I'll say this. I've only seen a few movies with Gina Davis, I've seen the Stuart Little movies, which she's okay. Uh, the Fly, where she's really good. She's awful in this. She is absolute trash. Her acting is wooden. The dialogue is prequel Lucas level. Uh, it's bad. Like, the acting in this is atrocious. Half of it feels dubbed, and it, it sounds awful. It's like Mia Sarah in Legend on a High Note. Um, it's just, oof, like you can tell this movie had problems during production. Not just on that level, but just in terms of money, in terms of getting it made. Nobody probably wanted to make this, but the director or whatever wanted to make it anyway, despite it losing a company. Surprise, Calco didn't sue for the fact that, oh, you said this was going to be a big hit. We put a lot of money in this. It's not Alvin. What a ripoff. Um, but the fact it killed the genre... And for such a great title, when you see Cutthroat Island, you think a grand pirate movie. It's not. It's so forgettable. I mean, the music's okay. I mean, okay, so I've talked about a lot of the negatives. Is there any positives to it? Again, production-wise, it's not bad. It looks nice. I will admit the camera, uh, the way the camera angles are, the way it's shot is pretty bad. Like, it's so ugly looking. But the production design, when you get down to it, if you were, like, on the set, this would look spectacular. But watching it as a movie, it's it's not good. Uh, but again, production guys, design's okay. The treasure staff's pretty fun. Um, I really do dig the, uh, the final battle. The final battle is actually pretty classy. It's classy swashbucklers, swinging on ropes, sword fighting, uh, the ship blows up, a pretty impressive explosion at the end. Uh, I should talk about Frank and Jella. Uh, so Frank and Jella, I've, again, only, much like Dean, Gina Davis, I've only seen her in a few, in him in a few movies. Uh, Masters of the Universe, I think he's great at as Skeletor, and he was also in the 1974 TV movie remake of the Tyrone Power Mark of Zorro. He was Don Diego de la Vega and Zorro, and he was pretty good at that. He actually did pretty much 
follow beat for beat Tyrone Power, but he gave it his own spin and charm to it. I would recommend that movie. It actually is free on YouTube. Uh, you should check that remake out, and he's great in that. But in this one, he is the villain, and he is pretty... Uh, you can tell he's the only one trying to do something fun with this. Like, they probably paid him good, but he was probably so miserable on set, he's thinking, okay, okay, I've played villains before. Um, I'll just do Skeletor. What's his line? No! Uh, okay, fine, that's gonna be most of my performance. Go! You know, that's half of his performance. He's just doing Skeletor as a pirate. Although, to be fair... Captain Skeletor sounds amazing for a pirate. <laughs> but yeah, he's the only he's one of the only few actors, and he's barely in the movie, but he has his moments. I like his sword, which is like a swordfish blade design, and so on. But again, the battles, the fights, that's that's classy pirate stuff. I dig that shit. Part of me at some point does want to make a pirate movie. It would be better than this shit. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. I'll appreciate it for, like, at least practical elements, practical effects, good design stuff. I keep forgetting the kid from Dragonheart A New Beginning is in this. I was like, oh, it's that kid. That wannabe uh, uh, Neil Patrick Harris-looking motherfucker. Um, he's, he's okay in it. But in regards to Cutthroat Island, it's just forgettable. It's so forgettable. It's so bland. It's so generic. They couldn't do anything with this as a pirate movie. It's just your typical film. The characters are boring. Uh, the dialogue's atrocious. The, the Most of it, the pace is boring. It's slow. Except when you get to the third act where they're on the island with the treasure and, and the pirates and the battles and stuff. Other than that, it's a forgettable film. And you can see why it flopped, why it killed the genre, unfortunately, because there could have been more pirate movies. Thank God. I mean... Technically, in a term, 2003, the pirate genre did come back, not just with Pirates of the Caribbean, but also with Master and Commander of the Far Side of the World, which is another good movie. Um, both came out, both were nominated, and both, you know, are pretty much like the classic sea adventures. Um, but this one, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not good. It's not good. But it has some parts in it that are decent. It's very much like the room of pirate movies. Ironically, it is very much like Roman Polanski's Pirates. But also, it's kind of interesting how many swashbuckling films were made in that time period. Because another movie I didn't know existed. Because I collected this with a series of laser discs I found at a, at a thrift shop. There was another pirate movie that came out. I don't know if I'll ever review this. But... <laughs> There was an adaptation of Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island by Turner uh, Entertainment. I think it was in theaters. This came out in 1990. And it stars... It stars Charlton Heston as Long John Silver, Christian Bale as Jim Hawkins, along with Oliver Reed and Christopher Lee. I've never seen this adaptation. I've read the book Treasure Island. I've seen the Muppet movie. I've seen the original Walt Disney film. I mean, God, talk about a pirate movie that can use a big budget adaptation nowadays. Get, where's my, you know, we get all these adaptations of Three Musketeers and Zorro and, you know, the Scarlet Pimpernel and all that shit. Where the fuck's my next adaptation of Treasure Island? We haven't had one in a good long while. Um, I'd like to see that. That'd be interesting. If some, some, no, hello, how, yeah, Muppet Treasure Island was the last Treasure Island movie. How the fuck have we not gotten an adaptation since? But regardless, um, Cutthroat Island, back to this. It's boring. It's forgetful. You're not gonna remember it in T-minus two seconds. It's, um, it should, it deserves to be sunk to the bottom of Davy Jones. Um, but at the same time, it does have some entertainment value. It does have some stuff. So, I'm gonna give it a good four out of ten. Uh, it's got moments, but it's very forgettable and very boring, and you're not going to remember it at all. I, I'm already starting to have amnesia from it. So, a big thank you to JT's Reward for recommending me this. I did want to get to it at some point, and I did, and I, I see what it was for. And thank him for talking about Robin Hood, uh, Prince of Thieves. If you guys want to go check out his review, link down below. Great review, uh, and I would recommend Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves over this. Uh, but with um, what's next for opening nights, we're going to try to make up for Patreons. We are, again, so sorry we have been unable to do these uh, videos, but I'm not going to leave this challenge uh, equal. Uh, kind of. I'm e leaving it equal with me and JT, but I'm going to pass this challenge on. I now challenge, this is I'm going to call the Swashbuckler Recommendation Challenge. Basically, 
this is going to be a pass on thing where I, uh, where you select two people and they both have to cover a swashbuckling adventure. So, and you know, and then they got to put vlog reviews like this on their channel and talk about it. You know, we haven't done one of those in a while. How often have we seen these tag videos? Remember tag videos? Good times. So, I'm going to challenge uh not to a duel. Um I challenge one Nick Jackson and Kaiju Network to talk about a swashbuckler movie on their channels. Uh, you, it could be something of your choosing. The rule is it has to be involving sword fights and adventure. Uh, so, unfortunately, Indiana Jones does not count. Uh, the swashbuckler is d d uh, designed to be sword fights, swinging on ropes, treasure hunting, and so on. So if you can find a movie like that, uh, please do. I mean, you can even be a, a medieval swashbuckler. That's okay, too. But if you can find one, let me know and review it on your channel. So I challenge one Nick Jackson of Jackson Knight Productions and Kaiju Network. Find something on that field, uh, there you go. The challenge is yours. We pass it on to you. So let me know your thoughts on Cutthroat Island in the comment section below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it a guilty pleasure? Do you think it's overlooked? Let me know. And uh, tune in next time. Uh, we're just working on the finale. Don't know about the next opening nights. I'm just I'm just doing them as I can. I'm, I'll, I will admit this year the biggest challenges has been fatigue and getting videos like on a weekly schedule. I really cut that out of my time because it was really draining and I was getting very tired. And fatigue has been one of the post-COVID plagues for a lot of people. And I'm going to try to push myself to get back on it. So until the next video uh, or whatever YouTube short, which I have been posting a lot of, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Film signing off saying, Cutthroat Island is forgettable. It doesn't make me want to cut my throat, but at the same time, man, Pirates of the Caribbean is 20 years old next year. Something to think about. Till then, uh, set sail me me tea, send all. See you later. Take it easy.